In business tonight, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley says that the Caribbean has been underperforming in terms of growth for some time now. And that's why the heads of government decided to restructure the CARICOM Commission on the Economy. Her comments came at the end of the two-day 18th special meeting of the CARICOM heads of government in Trinidad and Tobago. We have become accustomed to people operating purely on the basis of loyalty. And the Canadian banks have been in the region for decades, in some instances a century. Regrettably, however, we live in a world today where capital is very mobile and where people will make decisions to go elsewhere if they can get a better return elsewhere than here. And that's why even on last Friday morning at our Independence Day in speaking to the children of Barbados, I reminded them that nobody in the world owes us a living. And therefore, people will make decisions in their own determined interests. Meantime, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, has urged the region to make its banking sector more attractive and resilient to withstand international banking conditions. Prime Minister Rowley says that Republic Bank saw a business opportunity for growth in announcing that it would take over Scotiabank's assets in nine Caribbean countries. But he is disturbed that international banks are leaving the region. When we look at it, it might be seen in the context of the owners of that bank taking a position that banking in the Caribbean is not worth the trouble and not worth the risk. So it might very well be interpreted as a voluntary uh, de-risking. Because if the bank wasn't bought by a local bank, it's quite possible that they may have done something else. And then we have to look to see who else finds the Caribbean unattractive for banking. Time now to take a look at how stocks traded on selected exchanges across our region. Get started in Jamaica, where Victoria Mutual Investments Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with 1,246,476 units at $3.91 each. And they were followed by JNMB Group Limited 7.25%, VRJMD CR Preference Shares, and Wisinko Group Limited Ordinary Shares. In Trinidad and Tobago, JNMB Group Limited was the volume leader, with 538,692 shares changing hands for a value of $943,004.28. And they were followed by National Flower Mills Limited and Grace Kennedy Limited. And in Barbados, Sagicor Financial Corporation Limited was the sole security, trading 3,700 shares at $3.16 each. More big news uh, this week on Water Wednesdays. We continue to give you the details about the full rollout of the U.S. $3.5 million renewable energy project, which will allow for the installation of photovoltaic systems at two major BWA facilities, those being the Bowmanston Pumping Station and the Bridgetown Sewage Treatment Plant. Now, the project engineer Nathan Hart explains that the move to introduce PV at Bowmanston is critical to better serve the 20,000 or so residents, schools and businesses in rural Barbados connected to this system. The UAE BWA project goals is to establish a 500 kilowatt ground mounted system at the Bowmanston pumping station. This project will reduce energy consumption of the station by at least 20% and it result in a yearly saving of reduction of operational costs, not necessarily making money, but reducing operational costs by at least $500,000, while improving the efficiency of the operation to our customers. We are bent, and, and, and yes, we know that sometimes we have dropped the ball, but the BWA, with its new management, with the input of our minister, with the drive of our chairman, the, um, the advent of our new general manager, are moving towards efficiency in our operation to satisfy our customers, and we will get there. We will also incorporate in these projects, ladies and gentlemen, a design for battery storage, thereby increasing the further energy reduction by 
And as mentioned, if the grid is done, we will still be able to pump water to our citizens. Improved cost savings by battery operation can have an operational reduction of at least $800,000. The ability to deliver water to our residents even if the utility grid is rendered inoperable. Bomiston Station, ladies and gentlemen, plays a critical role in the rural part of the country. It serves at least 20,000 residents. Bomiston feeds Golden Ridge Station, which feeds another area of our parish in St. George. Bomiston feeds schools, secondary schools, much of one of which I went to the large school. It feeds clinics and also private and public. So the station really plays a critical role. Meanwhile, we hear there's a slightly different but innovative approach for the installation of PV at the Bridgetown Sewage Treatment Plant. The UAE goal with the Barbados Water Authority, second one, is to establish a solar car park, 500 kilowatts, at the Lake Folly site. And we are looking forward. This will, this will transform the, the, the whole dynamics of what you see in the city. Currently in the island, there are about 180 EV vehicles towards greener technologies and moving the Barbados towards greener technology. The benefits of the solar car port are twofold. The energy harvested will be used to reduce the operational costs at the Bridgetown Sewage Treatment Plant. The reduction in operational costs by at least $400,000 to $500,000. And we want the ability to generate revenue, it wouldn't be free, via paid parking. This adds to the Barbados Tourism Investment Package because it is in the heart of Bridgetown. And one of the things that we are moving towards also is that the Kensington Oval, as you will know, that's an international sports arena for cricket, which we are so good in the Caribbean. Parking is an issue. We and, and ourselves, when we visited this site, we looked at partnering with the Kensington Oval that when there are major international events, ladies and gentlemen, at least a minimum, there will be more, a minimum of 200 cars at a 35,000 square feet area will be able to park, paid parking, secured parking there at the site and generate revenue and also work in terms of dealing with the, the, the city upgrade. Each renewable energy PV project brings the government of Barbados go closer towards 65% renewables by 2030. 2030, that's just about 12 years away. The BWA announcing in a major way its role in reducing its costs while providing a better service to you, its customers. Again, thank you for watching Water Wednesdays as the BWA rolls out its latest project. To view this or a previous episode again, please visit the BWA's website, www.barbadiswaterauthority.com or you can go to YouTube and type in Water Wednesdays.